Hey everybody, welcome to the Double Stuff Podcast, where we're double the hosts, double the topics, and double the fun. I'm Dan. I'm Sarah. I'm Charity. And I'm Alan. <laughs> <laughs> and we'll- <laughs> Welcome back, Malin, to the <laughs> final season here. <laughs> we want to take a trip back this time to the 1800s to Ooh, talk yes. about what those weirdos in Victorian England were eating. <laughs> the people uh, just like us, but with bustles and corsets. Well, because you've heard of like you know some of the stereotypes of like oh like Irish people like to eat boiled food, you know, and mm-hmm. you get like weird concoctions that like old like, people used to eat and stuff mm. like that. Yeah. Well, I got nothing on some of these. I'll tell you that yeah. much. <laughs> so, uh, Sarah, let's go ahead and uh, start it off with one of your first ones that you got there. Okay, and I'm going to try to do this in my Victorian demeanor somehow. So, have any of you ever had marrow toast? Uh, sure. Bone marrow? <laughs> yeah, that's what Actually, I love. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, marrow toast. <laughs> marrow toast was a favorite of Queen Victoria. She had a cook named Charles Francantelli. I don't know if I'm saying that correctly, but he was instructed to get bone from the butcher, remove mm. the marrow, mm. uh, cut it into small pieces, and boil it in salt for a minute. Um, you would drain it and toss it with parsley, salt, pepper, lemon juice, and a smidge of shallots. That sounds good. Is that like, <laughs> is that like Marmite? <laughs> May, well, I've never had Marmite, though. I, I don't is think Marmite, Marmite marrow? I don't think Marmite's marrow. But, but, I think it's like it a was, yeast. It was a spread. Yeah. It was a spread. You would spread it on toast. Yeah. I'm just, I'm getting, it's giving Marmite vibes right now. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I don't know if that's the same <laughs> or not. <laughs> giving Marmite vibes. Yeah. So, We're talking about Marmite. Tell me more about this Marrow. <laughs> so, yeah, so that was a big thing that the upper class really liked. Um, or you would have something different. You would have something called brown Windsor soup, which I've heard people say in movies before. So this was something that upper class and lower class would, it, would eat. Uh, it contained beef gravy, malt vinegar, pepper, dried fruits, dates, figs, stuff like that, Ugh. and a dash of hot Madeira wine. Man, white people put raisins in everything. Everything <laughs> they do. Oh my God. Oh, I hate raisins. They still do that. I'm like, why are y'all doing that? Something's never changed. It's like, people, Gross. nobody asks for this. This no. is why you get paper plate duty at the That's right, family agreed. dinners. Yeah, like, you bring, bring plates. You can't yeah. burn that. Oh, yeah, yeah, you, you bring drinks. That. You do not touch the food. So, but yeah, so this was something, it seemed like it was something that all different classes of people would eat. Okay. So, yeah, but the marrow toast seemed to be a big one because the queen liked it. And if the queen liked it, then yeah. it was definitely become a staple it with was everybody. In. It was in, yes. Yeah, so. So, a bit of marrow toast for you all. Yeah, that so. sounds good. I'll do that. Yeah. I, I mean, I'm curious I'll do about it with a spoon. If the mar- Sop it up with a biscuit. <laughs> <laughs> a good old sop, Charity's favorite word. No, sop is worse no. than moist. Oh, I will stand on this hill until the end of time. You're you're, you're not gonna like one of the warns I have. Then. Oh, oh no! <laughs> no I'll, I'll wait till later for that one. Alan, you seem really into that last one. So, what do you have for the next one? Oh yes. Well, hmm, thank you. Um, have you ever heard of Kid Tree? No. No. Well, let me tell you about it. <laughs> During England's colonization of India, curried foods were extremely popular. This one was enjoyed for breakfast. The dish is smoked haddock, milk, rice, stir fry, topped with halved or quartered boiled eggs, and seasoned with curry, coriander, and turmeric. <laughs> mm. <laughs> that was so posh, Alan. <laughs> that actually doesn't sound too bad. I was saying yeah, your I voice, I have no idea what you said. Yeah. <laughs> it's basically like In a, English, Alan. It's just a, it's like a curry stew. It, yeah. it sounds yeah. good. It does sound good. Yeah. Uh, well, Lots England doesn't really have their own food, right? It's all like an amalgamation Kidry. of... Uh, <laughs> yeah. But yeah, so... Kidry. So it's basically whatever fish you got available... And yeah. some eggs and curry and turmeric. I mean, I try it. I try yeah. it out. It sounds good what to about me. The second so. one? That's oh, not nearly as gross. Okay, or <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> Pardon me. Or you have mock turtle soup. Turtle soup was once very popular until there was a turtle shortage. <laughs> Alternatively. <laughs> Alternatives were made, so it was a mock soup. It's typically made with brains and organs of the bovine. 
<laughs> well, waste not, I guess, right? <laughs> that shouldn't even be allowed to have turtle in the name. I don't no. care if you said mock turtle. Let's just call it, at least Gross. get the animal's name in there. Gross. Yeah, because I'm like, this cow tastes nothing like turtle. Yeah. I feel like this is where your air quotes like, this is turtle soup. Turtle, right? yeah, right. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, we can't, you can't use quotations when you're at the restaurant. Yeah, quote, would you like quote, some quote, of that? Turtle, turtle soup, turtle wink, wink. <laughs> no, I realized I got ahead of myself. So, okay. Sarah, what did you have to go with your marrow? Your delicious marrow toast. Oh, I actually did. That was the brown Windsor soup. That was the brown Windsor so soup. That, okay. So I, I did. I did my two. Oh, so, oh, these, so you got them thrown go off together. then. So. They, they don't go no, together. No, there's they're no just, way you're eating mock turtle soup just, with delicious kidri. Oh. That's right. <laughs> you get some kidri, you're like, oh, Sorry. is there more? You need... <laughs> Take that crap back yeah. to the kitchen. <laughs> <laughs> Give me those turtles. <laughs> <Yes. laughs> <laughs> All right, Jerry, what do you got then? All right. I don't even remember what my Victorian voice was. I'll oh just God, make up something. <laughs> no. I had spinach ice cream. <laughs> sounds disgusting. <laughs> All right, I'm just going to read it normal. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Spinach was mixed with sugar, milk, and eggs, making a custard that covered any leftover bitterness. So I guess it's not terrible. Yeah, it is. <laughs> Every, everything you just said was bad. No, I'm, but it's kind of like a smoothie. You know, you have like mainly fruit, but you still put some say, kale yeah, in it or something. When you do smoothies, like you can't really taste the spinach. Yeah, because they douse it with sugar <laughs> and cream. If you pour like enough sugar smoothie. and cream in anything, yeah. you'd be like, I guess I can eat healthy. <laughs> Give me that 3,000 calorie drink. <laughs> Well, I know a few years a ago. Smoothie. Homemade, yeah. Yeah, yeah, homemade. Yeah. No, a few years ago when avocados were like the big thing, people yeah. were doing like avocado ice cream and oh, sorbet yeah. and stuff. Yeah. So I'm wondering if it's got that same vibe. I'd um, even pass on that. I went to an avocado festival in California. Avocados I, are naturally creamy though, so that's probably yeah. why it works. Yeah. It doesn't though. The, I the, know. The oh, okay. Ice cream is gross. Oh, see, is I like it? the ice cream really? that I had. Yeah. I guess maybe it depends, maybe on, who depends does on where it. you get it. Yeah, I don't know I don't if know. anyone does avocado. That you probably have to. The make only that thing yourself. that was like surprising out of that festival, um, so farmers would highlight their avocados, and you could actually taste the difference because of the the bees that would be um, pollinating mm -hmm. that orchard or whatnot. Oh, okay. And this one farmer, he said, "I got bacon avocado," and I'm like, "What? Ice cream?" No, no, oh. no, no. And he would just cut off a slice of avocado and give it to you from his orchard. Uh -huh. And it had like a smoky oh. kind of a flavor to it. It was good. So the okay. bees are pollinating bacon I don't, flowers? I don't know how the, Maybe it the happened. bees are eating bacon in the but hive. He said, he's like, <laughs> there you go. he just got his own uh, like proprietary like orchard strain. Just douse the beehive with bacon. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's I, the secret. I feel like that's, that sounds like a horror movie, Carnivore Bees. Like they're just... Oh. They're just and they're eating bacon. I and have heard that you can <laughs> contaminate um, honey. Like there was a farm, a, a bee farmer, who um, had blue honey one oh. season. He couldn't oh. figure out what was going on. Oh, weird! And so he followed his bees to where they were uh, to the fields where he assumed they were getting their nectar from. No, they had found a shortcut from an M and M factory that was letting what? loose their dye and oh, sugar. No. Oh no! And so they were lapping up blue sugar from the M and M factory, oh, and then coming back and making blue honey. <laughs> man, that's like Willy Wonka. Yeah. Asking it. Wait, what? So was how did the M and M stuff get into? Like the bees went into the factory, is what you're saying? No, no, no. It was like leaching out from the factory somehow. Like into the water and or the something. Bees yeah. it up. Oh, no. weird. Yeah. I like the idea of a farmer lowjacking a bee and then driving around <laughs> a field trying to find it. <laughs> that's that's much more cinematic. Mm -hmm. I'll, we'll say that's that's exactly how that happened. Yeah. <laughs> it would be perplexing though. You're like making honey for years, and all of a sudden. Now it's blue, and you're like, what in the world is going on? That seems kind of 90s. Remember they yeah. used to have like purple ketchup and stuff? Oh, yeah. 1997 yeah. or something? Yeah, I remember that. Neon. <laughs> Sail red. Yeah. Code red, Mountain Dew. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Sales plummeted with Heinz when they did that. Because yeah, it's gross. Gosh. No one wants a purple hot dog. Kids yeah. love it, though. Kids love it. <laughs> they do. They're like weird looking stuff, right? So, yeah. Do you have a second one? Yes, I do have a second one. So this next one is called the Tipsy Hedgehog. Okay. Now That sounds fun. Yes, disclaimer, yeah. Victorians were not eating 
Sleeping Hedgehog, so we can no. say, start that off the top. But How they made could you? They're so cute. They are very cute. They made a hedgehog-shaped sponge cake mm. because they like the animal so much. So it was called Tipsy because the cake was soaked in wine or sherry, mm. and then it was topped with sweet cream and then had sliced almonds on top to mm. imitate the hedgehog's little prickly things. That's not weird. That sounds yeah, awesome. That actually sounds delicious. Yeah. I yeah. would definitely have a Tipsy Hedgehog. They were doing all kinds of liquor cakes, though, like yeah. rum cakes. I think oh, yeah. rum cake's the only one that kind of survived, but I do remember like wine cakes and things like that, but... Mm-hmm. I don't know. Why well, not during our Christmas episode? What was that, Sarah? Because they would set the cake on fire after soaking it yeah. in wine. What yeah. was that? I don't remember no, what the thing be, was called. But yeah, it would be like Everclear or some sort of like <laughs> extra proof. Well, it, well in, yeah. the, in that case, it was actually a game the, because they were trying to eat the cake without burning themselves. Oh. Like so, well, it's so, amazing what boredom will do <laughs> to you. <laughs> but they did this like Queen Victoria. It was like a game like <laughs> Your Majesty, don't burn your hands <laughs> trying to get trying to get this dessert. But yeah, it would apparently it would just stick it on fire. But yeah, that was a real thing. <laughs> But yeah, I think it was it was some kind of rum cake, or actually, I think mm-hmm. it had raisins in it. Which what I guess we can't before. laugh too much. We've made a whole holiday out of drinking and setting things off. You know, America, yeah. July Fourth, yeah. Independence Day. Some things don't change. We just change the name of the holiday. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, interesting. Well, yeah, I believe it was uh, Hippocrates that said, "Let food be thy medicine." And the Victorians really took that. And oh, boy, so these go. are some weird foods that Victorians ate specifically as medicine. Okay. The first one was called snail water. Let's guess oh, how, what that I has in it. I don't even like the sound yeah. of this. Unlike the hedgehog thing, <laughs> much more accurate oh. here. So this slimy drink started in the 17th century and maintained popularity through the Victorian era. <laughs> it was mainly used to cure tuberculosis. I don't know what cure means. Yeah. I guess if the person <laughs> dies, yeah, maybe that's yeah, cure. I don't suffering. know. Yeah. And apparently, then this is why I really... Uh, doubt it as a medicine there's no one right way to make it yeah so there's no science behind it apparently yeah one recipe called for 500 snails <laughs> so it's like mom's not feeling good and then the five-year-old goes i'll fix her yeah <laughs> That's exactly what it sounds like. I'm digging up snails in the <laughs> yeah. backyard, Mom. Be like, Gross. Mom has tuberculosis, and then they gave him snail water, and they started puking everywhere, and it's like, well, she's not coughing anymore. She's not coughing anymore. Yeah. <laughs> what other medicines so were there? So the other one that I had was treacle. Ew. So treacle is a thick syrup Ew. made from refined sugar, similar to molasses. It was mainly given to children. So I've actually heard of treacle before, mm, but the, it, yeah. it was believed to be good for the blood, mm. thickening it, and it was used during the treatment of poisoning. What poisoning from? It doesn't just say. Generic <laughs> just generic poisoning. You know, you ever come down with a case of the poisons? Yeah. It's just like, you know what? I need some syrup. So give me some pancakes. <laughs> oh, my glow bladder's acting up. <laughs> my valve won't close. <laughs> <laughs> I need some trickle. What, what needs to happen close now? Close my valve. Is that it? <laughs> <laughs> what we need now is treacle covered snails. So then yeah. it covers yeah. tuberculosis yeah. and poison. Yeah. That's what it was. It was it was good for poison because it would slow your blood and it wouldn't get to your heart so fast with the poison. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Really quick to go back to the snail water. So yep. just they would would they soak? No idea. It does it, not say. I, I it literally okay. it was just I called find snail water. My, my guess is that the fact that it was slimy is that they probably did like that are blending up the snails. If you took and- something to do with snail and put it in something to do with liquid, <laughs> you had drink. snail water. <laughs> That's wild. They were trying yeah. anything to get people to stop coughing up blood, apparently. I guess. <laughs> like, if I give you snails, will you just shut up? Yeah, I guess it's how all medicines start at some point. you yeah. got to test things out. Well, we, no, got a, we got a really big problem and no solution, so I know. anything counts. That's why tuberculosis wasn't popular in France. Yeah. They were just like, now we got this. Yeah, we figured it Bring out. Bring me the escargot. <laughs> We were made for this moment. Oh. It has arrived. Remember, remember when we were talking about the like, things that don't exist anymore, like with the leeches? It's kind of, I mean, yeah. thankfully they didn't have leech water because that wouldn't have worked. They would have yeah. sucked the The French didn't, the couldn't, didn't have leeches, so they just went out and grabbed snails yeah. and put them on their skin. It's the same thing. Like, it's worse. difference. Yeah. The leeches we do not ha- have. Hard shell leech. Yeah. <laughs> you got to become a snail snob. Yeah. <laughs> I don't eat those snails. 
All right, I have another one. All okay. right. Um, I think I'm. Pro- hopefully, I'm pronouncing this correctly, whether in my regular accent or my Victorian. Water sushi, and mm. it's S O U C H Y. I feel like we're really close to that water snail <laughs> thing we just talked about. Actually, funny enough, um, water sushi it means seafood water because Victorians like us would throw either their fresh catch of fish or leftovers into just a boiling pot of water and add spices. Leftover what? Even like the, like well, the fish heads and I, stuff? I'm assuming yeah. it's like a little bit of everything. Oh, okay. <laughs> so it'd like, be like a, like a broth. I was going to say, like yeah, a, I guess it'd be like, like a, a fish broth. broth yeah. Uh, and and it was definitely dangerous because it was often filled with bones from the fish and yeah. it often get stuck in their oh. teeth. Yeah, of course. <laughs> yeah. Makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. yeah, so just be anything fish, leftovers or a new catch. So you this was put... a medicine or this was a, a popular food? I think it was just a popular food. Popular okay. food, yeah. You know, people weren't as coddled back in the day. This, yeah, I, I, I had a, there, there was a lady that ran a, a corner store when I was in San Francisco living on Knob Hill. And uh, I was telling her we had we there's not a lot of stores like and you don't have a car when you're in San Francisco so it's whatever's closest and you build up a relationship with whoever the proprietor of the the establishment is so anyway um, I was talking to her about how I started steaming bok choy and she was like oh don't throw out the water and I was like really and she was like yeah the water uh, underneath uh, you should drink it it's a really good brew it's kind of a fix all I never drank any of that water because I was like (laughs) I'm not going to do that yeah I'm American. They're like, all right, we don't lady. drink dirty water. <laughs> <laughs> we well, buy it. Well, it's just, it's just like with banana water, if you guys heard of that, where you just take the no. banana peel, soak it in water, and it's good for your hair. And also you pour it in I know plant- you can make liquor out of it, too. Oh, well, I wouldn't be surprised. You can, yeah. you can ferment anything. Oh, so, okay. No, we, my but, mom just did it for, like, plants. But it's also good for, your, for plants. For your garden. It's it kind of the same plants. as compost, but just what? liquid. I think your mom was making a little No, a little <laughs> no She actually got off the internet. She so was making that sushi. <laughs> This is for the plants, wink, 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 wink. <laughs> She's in the back singing how yeah. dry I am in what a barrel. What are all these vats of banana water doing in the garage? <laughs> Don't open them. Okay, so, so well, I have one more. So mincemeat okay. pies was another yeah. one. Yeah. Which everyone's kind of heard of, but it's yeah. made with ox tongue, of course, raisins, which is another mm. staple, a suet, which is a hard white fat on the kidneys of sheep and, and cattle, mm. and a whole lot of sugar. It was a Christmas staple. So very popular. Now that's still around. Yep. Yeah, I don't, I don't know, know if it's they, made with the same thing. But. I would, I, I would think it probably is. It seems pretty well, standard. This is coming from me. The raisins ruin that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I as a vegan can eat ox tongue, but raisins where I draw the Not line. Not can. Just the rest of that, I'm like understandable. And then you put raisins in there, just get out. You're like, you're like, <laughs> no. I'd be a terrible Victorian. I'm the odd one out because I actually like beef tongue. And I'll have it in tacos. That's right. Yeah. That was in the first season. Mm-hmm. Okay, but raisins. Would you have it with raisins? Well, no. A taco. There are no raisins in tacos. <laughs> white people taco. <laughs> I was gonna say, yeah, white people say taco. It. I Even didn't white say people it. would be like, Dan said I'll it, say so it. It's okay. Yeah. Ground beef, lettuce, tomato, shredded cheese. Very, very mild Actually, tomato sauce. Actually, that, that, would, that would be a Kansas taco, because you said a Kansas taco could be anything that was uh, left over in the fridge. True, I could. So a Kansas but taco could have raisins in there it. There are no raisins in this fridge. Yeah. <laughs> Ever, ever, my man. I, I speak against it. <laughs> <laughs> Solidarity. Wait, we are yeah. not manifesting this talk. <laughs> yeah. What you got, Cher? Okay, so most of what we talked about, I think, is for the upper class. Okay. So I have one that the lower class would have. Now these make sense because lower class obviously didn't have a lot of money to get the the beef tongue and all and the snail water, I guess. But okay. so the lower class had something called sheep's trotters. Ew. <laughs> yeah, it sounds appetizing. Like that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that sounds like it'll give you the trot. <laughs> In more ways than one. So uh, this was also for affordability. So boiled sheep's foot was an affordable alternative to meat. So street vendors would sell fried sheep's trotters, which tasted better than boiled sheep's trotters. So I guess anything fried is going to taste no. better. So that no. kind of goes with I that idea. Know. Yeah, I don't think so. so. You don't want a fried that sheep's might be foot. That across the line there in terms of the fried. Yeah, there's yeah, there's yeah. no raisins in it. There's no raisins you don't, you don't want You don't want fried feet? Is that no, no, no. I don't even think that could be saved. <laughs> okay, 
we'll try this on for size. So the next one is called broxy. So broxy is an umbrella term for any meat from an animal that had dropped dead from a disease. So, <laughs> Roadkill? So, yeah, if it had died from a disease, they could oh. still sell it. It was just a lot cheaper than fresh meat. Yeah. So if you're poor, you would take your chances of having diseased meat or no meat at all. Oy. So sheep, we're going with sheep again. Sheep were often sold as broxy meats because they were susceptible to many diseases like salmonella and ringworm. Eey. So, so then you would enjoy a nice dose of ringworm yourself. Yeah, so you get a discount oh and there's no raisins in broxy either. <laughs> Man, and I complain about being poor now. <laughs> Come on. We weren't like eating diseased <laughs> Yeah, meats. I've never yeah. been so uh, thankful for the yeah. FDA. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Let's put some regulations on <laughs> the end. Yeah, so count your what blessings. What was the king and queen doing? They were just like, whatever. <laughs> if you change the oh name, it makes gosh. it safe. We'll just, we'll call it broxy and you can have diseased meat. <laughs> so, but yeah, say what you want about the Victorians, but they're the ones that kind of brought the idea of. And like, bad ideas. Well, yes. <laughs> but the idea of actually going going out to eat mm. so, yeah they had to because they're eating broccoli yeah. <laughs> and sheep but, yeah but they made it like a social thing which is like what we do now like if we want to yeah. get together we go out to eat or go out for coffee and stuff mm -hmm. and the victorians were the ones that kind of made that a popular thing i will say yeah. a lot of the poor man's food has become the like delicacy upper class right. delicacy sort of thing so mm -hmm. i don't think broxy and sheep's foot or sheep's trotters have made the list but i think <laughs> escargot started off is like they start out with snail water and they're like what if we cook this in yeah butter? if you soak it in butter it's good yeah <laughs> they get together and be like can you guys believe we're eating this yeah. Yeah. It's ridiculous right yeah. <laughs> can you believe our poor grandfathers oh. used to scrounge for this <laughs> and now we pay 500 dollars a plate yeah yeah this is a prank show <laughs> <laughs> All right, I don't. I think this is the first time we've talked about food where I didn't come away hungry. <laughs> oh, that's <laughs> so true. <laughs> so if you want to listen to the past episodes where we do talk about good food, that's right. Sarah, where can they find it? Yeah, check us out on doublestuffpod.com. All of our episodes are there, even the tantalizing ones. Uh, you can, also, all of our episodes are on YouTube as well, so check us out on that at Double Stuff Podcast. Of course, on Facebook and Instagram, we're available on there and on Twitter X at Double Stuff P, and that's the letter. Peace.